What up, what up, it's Dane and in this video I'm going to be telling you why powerlifters are not as jacked as bodybuilders and why bodybuilders are way more jacked than powerlifters. So let's get straight into the video, right? Basically, it says in the picture, the proof is in the pudding, right? So look, oh, that's saying, man, it makes me laugh. Eesh. So anyway, um, just compare any powerlifter to a bodybuilder. Bodybuilders are way bigger or they look way more aesthetic than powerlifters, right? And there are a number of reasons why I'm going to be telling you in one second. Not exactly one second, I'm going to be telling you in a minute. Even if you, you could take a powerlifter that uses steroids or a bodybuilder that uses steroids, both of them, you know, it's the same circumstance. The bodybuilder will be a lot bigger than a powerlifter. And there are a number of reasons why, let me tell you. First of all, they work in a completely different rep range. And if you don't know this, I don't know what you know. Yeah, they work a completely different rep range, work completely differently. So let, let me begin explaining why. Ah, so first of all, bodybuilders, as you probably know, work in a lot higher reps, right? And the whole purpose of this is to chase the pump. And I know sometimes I say in some of my videos, don't worry about the pump too much, but it is actually really, really important when it comes to maximizing muscle growth, right? Or optimizing in that fact. Um, basically, what I always, the primary growth to muscle, uh, primary growth to muscle growth, that makes sense, yeah, nice one. The primary factor for muscle growth is applying more weight on the body over time, right? But when we, when it comes to muscular hypertrophy, uh, there are a number of like, different factors that come into play. You don't just want to be adding more weight in working in a rep range of say one to five. That's not going to optimize muscular hypertrophy, right? You're going to add more weight over the bar while still working in a moderate to high rep range. So anyway, let's get straight into it. So like I said, chasing a pump. Chasing a pump serves its purpose. Here's why, and like, like I always say, I, I do scientific research, or not so much scientific, but I do more in detail research, and then I try and simplify it for most people, right? Because most people, and I understand, they don't want to go, like, delve right deep into the scientific research and shit like that, so maybe I'll try and uh, simplify as much as I can, so bear me if I take like two seconds to uh, uh, do that shit, so. Cell swelling, right? And this is basically when you chase the pump and you can see the cells swell, right? You can, the muscle swells, you look 10 times better than you usually look. And yeah, I always wish I just, my body just stays like that. And it will eventually, I will get to that. That look of when my body's pumped, but now, you know, you know, I just keep chatting shit. But basically, cell swelling, right? This is very, very important. And there are a number of factors why chasing a pump and the swell swelling is important. Factor number one is obviously when the cell swells, more water is, goes into the cell, and as the body for response, right, it grows big because all that water goes into the cell. And how can I say in uh, the simple terms, right? I told you, give me a few seconds. So all the water goes into the cell, and automatically the, the body responds like, oh shit, the swell needs to go, uh, grow larger, and that's why your muscles get larger. That's like one factor. Another factor is um, what's it called? Sarcoplasmic which is like uh, glycogen, like all those, all those tiny little elements that you don't really think about, right? They also um, contribute to the chasing a pump, increasing muscle size. And also one thing as well that's that really, that's really, really important and in simple terms, everyone would understand this, right? Protein synthesis is very, very important for building muscle, right? We all know this. And chasing a pump, it actually increases uh, protein, um, fuck. yeah, increases protein synthesis and decreases pro protein breakdown, right? And this is real, real important because it, it goes like this, protein synthesis, and then it decreases protein breakdown. And I'm sure you know what that's gonna tell you, more muscle, more muscular growth, in fact. So those are, the, those are like, I think it was three main factors for chasing a pump, like cell, cell swelling, right? It's really, really important when it comes to uh, body body, right? And like I always say, primary driver though is adding more weight on the bar, but you still wanna be working now higher rep ranges, and I'll get into that later. So another fact is time under tension, man. And this is like, it's said everywhere, right? Every, every, everywhere on YouTube. I always hear bodybuilder time under tension, time under tension, time, like any anywhere you go, you normally hear time under tension, right? And this is really, really important because let me use a few examples. I'm not gonna do the math exactly, let me let me tell you. So for example, say um, a powerlifter, they lift, let's say 100 kg for three reps, for five sets, right? And a bodybuilder does, let's say, I don't know, 80 kg for eight reps for three sets, right? If I do the math right, I'm just guessing, I'm just using an example, but 
actually overall the body water gets more load because the load is basically the weight times the reps right and over over a time the body will body will get more load but the most important fact here i'm not so fussed about the weight and the load too much the most fact, important fact here is that the time on the tension right eight reps uh, it's going to be a lot more time on, time on the tension than three reps obviously depending on how like if a power lift does a rep like uh, five seconds down five seconds up then the time on the tension will be a lot different but i'm just using like a standard base on like what power lift is going to do real slow centric just a normal a normal reps right so power lifters might do say three three reps and a bodybuilder might do eight to twelve reps that time on the tension right is going to be a lot greater plus the workload it, it couldn't be the same or the bodybuilder could have a great workload in fact so yeah time on the tension man when it comes to bodybuilding this shit's important and you hear it all the time, so I'm another person that's going to be telling you this. And factor number three, there are there are many other factors, right? This is not like I'm probably using the three main factors, right, to optimize growth uh, for bodybuilders compared to like powerlifters and shit. But yeah, there's there's a lot more factors in this. But I'm just giving you the top three tips, Dane's top three tips, right? So t uh, tip or factor number three is the trainer bodybuilders usually train higher reps to failure, right? And this is very, very important because, um, how can we say, powerlifters, right, the, there's two types of muscle fibers. Type 1, which is slow twitch, uh, type 2, which is fast twitch. Powerlifters mainly utilize the fast twitch muscle fibers because slow, um, slow twitch muscle fibers, fiber number 1, is more endurance athletes, right? And by um, my bodybuilders training in the moderate rep range, they kind of also hit the uh, type 1 muscle fibers, right, depending on how high they rep. So if they do 15 reps, you you certainly hitting the type one muscle fiber, and you you like the type one muscle fiber. It is a fiber. It can increase in cell size, right? So it can grow bigger in simple terms. So again, bodybuilders working in higher rep range uh, muscle fiber or type one muscle fiber, whatever you want to call it, can grow in size. And yeah, the powerlifters are only utilizing the fast twitch um, fast twitch muscle fibers, which is type number two. So yeah, again, power uh, bodybuilders getting the both of best balls there again. So yeah, those are the three main tips. As always, man, you, you know me, man. I like to summarize this shit up, and I know this video was meant to be like wise one wise a powerlifter or not wise a powerlifter or wise bodybuilder a more jack than a powerlifter, right? So I try to make the comparisons, like showing you that bodybuilders utilize more time under tension than powerlifters. Bodybuilders train in higher rep ranges for a reason. Stuff like that. So, as always, man, you know I like to uh, summarize and recap uh, all, all everything I've said in the past. I think nine minutes. Shit, this video is long. If you've been watching to this point, man, I respect you. I hope, I hope you're finding it informative. So let's summarize the show. Chasing a pump, uh, working in higher rep ranges, right? This is very, very important. Swell, swell, swell. swell. <laughs> no, no, no. Third time, third time lucky. Cell swelling. Yeah, I got it. Cell so swelling, yeah, um, chasing a pump is very, very important. And also, one thing I didn't uh, mention is hitting the muscle fibers from different angles, right? And here's why you do it, because I always hear this, and on YouTube, a lot of people say this, but they don't explain why. Here's why. It's very, very important, because see your chest, all those main muscle groups, chest, but, uh, lats, like those big muscle groups, quads, they're, they're different, like, how can we say, you can't just do a bench press, right, and expect all the muscle fibers to be recruited. Hitting it from different angles, which bodybuilders always do, recruits all the fibers that they can, right? So if I do um, chest dry and I just do bench press, it's not going to recruit all the muscle fibers. I've done no isolation work for my upper chest. It's not, not going to recruit all the fibers there. Like you get what I'm trying to say, right? Hit the muscle from different angles. So anyway, that's just like off tangent a bit, but I was just summarizing this shit off for you. So step number one was chasing a pump. Step number two it was time and attention. Like I said, powerlifters have a lot less um, time and attention on bodybuilders. And step number three, shit, what was step number three? Uh, oh, you're working on higher rep ranges, right? So increasing muscle cell type one, <laughs> that was all backwards. Increasing type one muscle fibers size, right? So there you go, again, optimizing my muscular hypertrophy. Let, let's get science here. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. This is basically um, why bodybuilders are more jacked than powerlifters. Like I said, I try to compare the best I can, but by, by the sounds of it, you can hear I was more on the bodybuilding side trying to show you how to optimize muscular hypertrophy. And that's basically what I'm all about, right? I'm not a powerlifter. I say I'm big on powerbuilding, right? But 
what, the, what I mean by big on power building is basically increasing my strength so I can work um, with higher weight at the bodybuilder rep range, the quote unquote bodybuilder rep range. That's basically what, what I want to do, right? So, say for I do dumbbell shoulder press, I do say 40 kg for let's say five reps. Um, I do that, and then for a few weeks, I can do a 40 kg for let's say eight reps. So, then I go back to hypertrophy, then I'm doing eight to 12 reps for muscular hypertrophy. It's that simple, right? Periodization is the way to go, I'm telling you, man. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. Um, I try to spit the truth as best as I can, make things as simple as I can. Um, I don't know everything, I don't know everything. I'm telling you, you know, once you think you know everything about stuff, you know nothing. Okay, th this video is a bit coming too long. I'm going off a tangent now anyway. So as always, stay positive, stay smiling, and I'll see you in the next one.